Hey, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments. And here's a question I got asked recently. Okay, so the individual had a date in cell A1. For now, I assume it's a working you know, day. And he wants to fill down the other working days. Maybe not necessarily in the month for now, but maybe just up to a certain point. But he doesn't want to fill in um, you know, weekends, so just the weekdays. So let me show you a couple of methods. First of all, they look like three different methods, but they all feel the same to me. The first thing you can do is use the fill handle. Instead of doing a left mouse drag, I'll do a right mouse drag. I'll just stop at any point. Once you do this, you would see the autofill options. Okay, and you can see, you know, fill weekdays. So I do fill weekdays and straight up, it fills the weekdays and skips the weekends. You can see that it jumps from two to five. Okay, so the other way you would have done it is rather than using the left, you use um, the right, you use the left, right? Because we already have data now on the left, we could actually just double click. If you do this, it's just going to fill the series sequentially. It's not going to respect weekends or otherwise. What you can then do is you use the autofill options and you then pick what fill weekdays. Okay, so you get the same result. The other way you could do it is you could put your start date here and we are going to use a fill series. So from here, you go to the home tab, which you most likely would be on. You go to fill and you do what series. Because you've selected a date, it automatically picks, you know, the date you need section. What you need to do now is to select a weekday. And where do you want your series? If you're selecting rows, it's going to go from left to right. If you select columns, it's going to go from top to bottom. Then the other thing you could do is to put a stop value. So you just put a stop, you know, date. And if that date is not a working day, Excel just uses the working day just before it, right? So let me just use this to extend the list beyond where I am now. I could just do something like 25th of April, 2021, and I do okay. Okay, so you see it fills it all the way to 23rd, and that's where it stops. So these three methods, you can get, you know, the um, working days and you skip the weekends. The only challenge with all of them, as you can see, is the fact that it's not dynamic. The data is all fixed. So I can change, for example, the first date to 1st of May and have it update. Okay, so that's something you may want to do. So let me show you how you can do that. So let's just take this out and take this all out. Okay, so assuming I have this as my start date and what I want to do is then to fill the other days. I could use the workday function because what the workday function does is it gives you the date, which is X working days from a certain date. Sounds like English, let's demonstrate it. If I do work day and I select this date and I say one, meaning that one working day from 1st of April, okay? It's going to tell me 2nd of April. If you copy this down, now you can see it's 5th, which is saying that 5th is the next working day after 2nd. That automatically tells you that 3rd and 4th are Saturday and Sunday. So with the work day, you know, you can actually uh, create that sequence that you want. So what it means is that 2nd of April is one working day from 1st. 5th of April is two working days from 1st. Then you need the uh, date that is three working days from 1st and all that. So it means that you can actually create using the workday function. Sorry. You can create using the workday function here. And if you create a sequence, you know, I'm just going to do a sequence here. Let's say sequence of 10, which would mean, you know, 10 working days from 1st of April. Okay. And you do control enter. And you can see it gives you that. If you change this to 1st of, say, September, you know, it updates accordingly. Okay, what you may now want to do is you may want to take it a step further and say, okay, no, I don't just want to fill in, you know, X number of days. I want to fill in for that month. So once I put in the first date of the month there, I want you to fill for the entire month. Okay, so let's see how that's going to work. Uh, so I'm going to take this out. So I'm going to use the workday function still. I'm going to start here as my start date. Huh? Now, when it comes to the number of days, I'm going to create a sequence, you know, which starts from one, two, three to the number of working days. I cannot use the number of days in the month because that's different from the number of working days. So what I may just do is I would make a calculation of the number of working days in that month and feed it into the sequence function. How do I get the number of working days in that month? I can use the network days function. The 
Network days tells me how many days, you know, working days I have between a start date and an end date, both of them inclusive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the sequence function like I did before. But don't bother about the sequence now. Just look at what's going on inside. So in here, I'm going to do network days, right? It asks me for a start date. This is going to be my start date, whatever date I have here. And what's going to be my end date? My end date is going to be the end of that month, right? The last day of that month. How do I get that? I can use the EO month function. The EO month function is end of month. So I'm going to do end of month of that date. Okay. And then I put how many months interval am I looking at? I'm looking at the same month because if it's September, I want you to stay in September. So I put zero. If I put one, it would give me the end of the month of October. That's the way it works. Okay. And I close the bracket. So this is just going to tell me how many working days I have between 1st of September and the last day of September. Now, there's something you need to note here. Because we've already taken 1st of September, which for this purpose, I would assume, is a working day. It means that the number of working days I have here, of course, includes September itself. So if I stick with the network days formula as it is this way, I'm going to have one extra date, right? Which isn't what I want. It's going to spill into the next month. So what I need to do is to put a minus one to accommodate, you know, the first date that I've already taken care of which is here. So I'm going to take that out and then I close the sequence. Let's just see what the sequence gives us. It's just going to be, you know, one, two, threes all the way to the number of days. So you can see it gives you one to 21. Huh? So that's the number of working days, you know, aside, of course, 1st of September. So once you have that, you can close the bracket and you can press, um, you know, enter. Okay. And you can see it goes all the way to 30th. Let's change this to um, maybe April. Um, okay. Press and that's fine. You could go to February. Hopefully, first of February is a working day anyway. <laughs> it gets more complex if it isn't. And you can see you have what you want. So this is more dynamic, and this is probably how you want to approach it. It can get a little more interesting if we want to incorporate holidays. Then we now start to use the workdays international function. Okay, so you can see there's Workdays International and then there's also Network Days International. Okay, so both of them can factor in holidays. And the other thing is that they can also factor in weekends that are not your regular um, Saturday and Sunday in, in the events that you are in a location where the weekends are maybe, for example, Friday and Saturday. So with the Network Days International, Workdays International, you can handle that. So this video was just to show you how to get a series of, you know, working days from a start date i hope you know you've learned a few things from this if you like this video you can hit you know the like button you can also subscribe to the channel for you know more awesome content like this but for now i'm out